Welcome back everyone, my name is Robius and today I bring you the ninth episode in the new iteration of Assassin's Creed The Real History. In this series, I walk you through the depiction of a character in the Assassin's Creed franchise and then compare this representation to the historical source material. Therefore, please be aware of potential story spoilers. This video will concentrate on the history of the French general, known primarily as Thomas Alexandre Dumas, who served during their revolution and who we briefly met during the events of Assassin's Creed Unity. To start this video, I'll begin by discussing the period of his life that occurred before the game. The man who would come to be known as Thomas Alexandre Dumas was born on March 25, 1762, in Saint-Domingue to the minor French noble Alexandre Antoine Davy de la Peutrie and his slave Marie Cessette Dumas. His youth was marked by his highly contrasted societal stature, in which he was considered a slave due to his mother's status and a noble due to his father's. After growing up on a plantation, upon reaching adolescence, his father returned to France to reclaim the family inheritance. To accomplish this goal, his father sold Thomas Alexandre, his mother, and his siblings to pay the travel cost. After reaching France, following a few months, Thomas Alexandre's father utilized a clause in the previous sale that ensured he was able to buy back his son, thus allowing him to legally enter France and become a free man. Unfortunately, his mother and siblings were left in Saint-Domingue as slaves. Having joined his father and moved to Paris, Thomas Alexandre was provided with an education that matched his noble standing, during which he met Joseph Boulogne, Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Reaching adulthood while living in a grandiose atmosphere fueled by their estate, things changed in 1786 when his father got married and limited his son's financial allotments. Consequently, in June of 1786, Thomas Alexandre joined the French army within the Queen's Dragoons, a light cavalry unit. Unfortunately, despite there being a military edict allowing fourth generation nobles to enlist as officers, Thomas Alexandre was deprived of this opportunity despite qualifying in reason of the French racial laws of the period. Instead, he enlisted as a private and adopted the name Alexandre Zuma, taking his mother's maiden name as his father demanded that their noble title not be sullied by such a low military rank. After being posted near the Austrian border for a few years, Dumas's unit was moved around towns as the French Revolution began in 1789. In one such town, he met Marie-Louise Labouret, to whom he became engaged and later married in 1792. When the National Constituent Assembly passed a decree to maintain a constitutional monarchy, civil unrest escalated as the Republicans protested this decision. On July 17, 1791, Dumas' forces joined with the National Guard at the Champ de Mars in Paris under the command of the Marquis de Lafayette. Unfortunately, by the afternoon, the National Guard and supporting troops came into conflict with the protesters, leading to the events of the Champ de Mars massacre, in which an undetermined amount of crowd members were killed and a few hundred activists were arrested. In mid-1792, Zuma was promoted to the rank of corporal and joined the French forces marching on the Austrians. Certain records state that during this endeavor, Zuma successfully captured a dozen enemy troops when scouting their territory, thus building his reputation and earning him an October promotion to the rank of lieutenant colonel and second in command in a legion composed of free men of color known as the Légion Franche des Américains et du Midi, which was led by the Chevalier de Saint-Georges. It would technically be at this point where Thomas Alexandre Zuma was first introduced in Assassin's Creed Unity. Historically speaking, in early 1793, the general Charles-François Dupérier Dumouriez was seen as a potential threat by the new revolutionary government, who sent commissioners to investigate his loyalty. He responded by arresting these individuals and then tried to organize a coup d'état for which he sought the support of his troops. Dumas was among the large group which refused to join him and even stood against these rebels, thus eventually forcing the general to flee the country. Arguably, this event served as the inspiration for the co-op mission in which Dumas was introduced in the game that featured a General Marcourt, perhaps a stand-in for General Dumouriez, who was organizing a Templar-controlled coup aimed at overthrowing the Republican government. In this fictional interpretation, Dumas became privy to the plot and called in his assassin allies so that they could use the recruitment tournament as a way to reach Marcourt and ultimately kill the conspirators. Historically, 
In an unfortunate turn of events, the so-called Black Legion was disbanded in mid-1793 when the government accused its leader, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges, of misappropriating funds. Thankfully, this did not end Thomas Alexandre's military career, as he was actually soon promoted again and again within the same year for his exemplary service, first as a brigadier general in the Army of the North, then as a divisional general, then as commander-in-chief of certain western forces, and finally he was provided command over the Army of the Alps, numbering over 50,000 men by the end of that year. In this role, Dumas led his army against Austrian and Italian forces, enacting several successful assaults that culminated in a victory where French troops used climbing gear to ascend a mountain, surprise and capture over a thousand enemies, and ultimately open the way for a second Italian campaign against the Austrian Empire. Although this victory catapulted his fame, in achieving it, Dumas had disobeyed orders from the current governing body. Therefore, he was summoned before the Committee of Public Safety, led at the time by Maximilien de Robespierre in the midst of the Reign of Terror for an evaluation. Recognizing that such a summons usually preceded a trial for treason, Dumas actively delayed his departure, and successfully did so just long enough for the terror to reach its end in late July of 1794. A few months later, Thomas Alexandre was briefly given command of the Army of the West, and by the following year, he joined the Army of the Rhine and served in combat, at which point he was injured. Within Assassin's Creed Unity, a series of fictional side missions involving Dumas were then introduced, in which the soldier worked alongside Arnaud in an effort to defend Napoleon Bonaparte and the city of Paris from royalist attacks and outside influence. Historically speaking, in late 1796, Dumas served in the French Army of Italy under Napoleon Bonaparte. Within the following months, they besieged an Austrian-held city, and Dumas, using information from a captured spy, led his own division in preventing enemy reinforcements from relieving the siege, which succeeded in early 1797. Unfortunately, tensions between Bonaparte and Dumas developed and rapidly escalated during this campaign, starting with Thomas Alexandre opposing the idea that French troops be allowed to plunder the territory and progressing when Napoleon responded by erasing his involvement altogether from the final combat report. This clash continued when Dumas, despite the protest of his troops, was reassigned and technically demoted. Nevertheless, in this new role, he gained notoriety within enemy ranks, earning the title of Black Devil after successfully orchestrating the capture of thousands of Austrians. This continued success garnered the admiration of General Joubert, who had Dumas transferred to his division. In their continued campaign together, he fought in many battles, but these all pale to the events of March 23, 1797, where Dumas was recorded as having single-handedly defeated and pushed back a whole Austrian troop squadron while fighting on the bridge over the river Isaac. The French people and even Bonaparte himself compared Dumas to a Roman hero and he was subsequently made regional cavalry commander and a military governor. This battle was briefly depicted in a summary about Dumas during a Unity co-op mission. As this represented his final historical appearance in the game, we've reached the next chapter in which his life events after Unity will take center stage. About a year after his promotion, Dumas was part of a large French force under Bonaparte's command that departed from France in a campaign to conquer Egypt. Dumas was made commander of cavalry for the Army of the Orient and led their forces to capture Alexandria. Thereafter, Bonaparte sent him to pay the ransom for captured French troops, with multiple sources claiming that during the exchange, locals thought Dumas led the European forces and not Napoleon because of his stature and direct participation in the initial assault. Furthermore, Thomas Alexandre led his cavalry in the Battle of the Pyramids and was a large player in the French victory that saw their capture of Cairo. Unfortunately, throughout this campaign, Dumas and other generals disagreed with Bonaparte's leadership at times, with their commander eventually hearing about these discussions and confronting his men. Some records propose that he threatened to shoot Dumas for the mutinous behavior, but instead agreed to the man's request for leave to return to France. However, when the British surprised the French and destroyed their fleet, Thomas Alexandre had to remain in Egypt. In this time, he was integral in quelling a revolt in the city of Cairo. In March of 1799, Dumas secured passage on a vessel bound for France, but 
prior to reaching their destination, they were forced to land in the Kingdom of Naples due to some unexpected damage. Soon after, they were imprisoned by the local Holy Faith Army, an ally of King Ferdinand IV of Naples and enemies of France. Kept in deplorable conditions, Dumas suffered illnesses, which he attributed to possible poisoning that included partial deafness, blindness, and paralysis. Despite Bonaparte's rise to power in late 1799, he ignored the requests of Thomas Alexandre's wife to organize his rescue. Instead, when the French eventually fought Ferdinand IV's army in 1801, they were then able to free their comrade in March of that year. After his return to France, he fathered his most recognized child, who would become known as Alexandre Dumas, the famous author of such works as The Three Musketeers, The Man in the Iron Mask, and The Count of Monte Cristo, among many others. In a regrettable turn of events, Dumas was then refused his arrears in pay for his time in captivity and any cut of the indemnity agreement which came at the end of the war, instead needing to support his family with his limited military pension. Despite making multiple attempts to communicate with Bonaparte to either have this rectified or at least to secure another military post, these were all ignored, and instead he was officially retired from service. Even worse, it is said a new law was enacted that banned soldiers of color from living within Paris and its surrounding neighborhoods, thus forcing Dumas to seek documentation simply to maintain his residence. Ultimately, Thomas Alexandre Dumas died on February 26, 1806, likely from stomach cancer or complications related to an ulcer at the age of 43. Having reached the end of Dumas' life, we'll proceed on to the final chapter of this video and review everything we've learned so far about the historic individual and compare it to his portrayal in the game. To begin, in terms of the completely fictionalized components of his depiction in Unity, considering how briefly he appears in the game, all that can really be said is that he was not an actual ally of a secret order of assassins which he called in for help in guarding Napoleon and retrieving some of his stolen property. With the blatantly obvious out of the way, it's worth mentioning that the game did alter some actual events to better fit their narrative. The main example of this was the tournament co-op mission in which Dumas coordinated with the assassins to crush the plot of General Marcourt. In reality, Dumas did decline to join the coup of General Dumouriez and stood against his followers, but there was no such tournament involving Templars, and the general actually fled and was not killed in the end. In addition, if we want to get into technicalities, it's worth saying that the Unity Co-op slightly inflated his successes by saying that he was a man who single-handedly took on whole battalions, when in reality he only once took on a whole squadron alone, which was still an incredible feat nonetheless. With this limited information in mind, I'm personally comfortable in saying that Thomas Alexandre Dumas was well depicted in Assassin's Creed Unity in my opinion. I would justify this statement by saying that although the game tweaked a few minor elements to fit the AC mythos, in general, the events in which Zuma was portrayed were either historically accurate or based on historical events. Furthermore, I personally also appreciated how the game captured his physical likeness based on a few paintings and his mannerisms as they were described by multiple sources. For example, in the fictional mission where Zuma enlists Arnaud to help defend then-Captain Bonaparte, you can tell there's tension between the individuals already, however Zuma remains loyal and honorable in terms of fulfilling his duties. In his limited speaking scenes, he seems generally warmer as a person than Bonaparte, which was perhaps a nod to the popular idea that he was far more liked by the public than his contemporary, a type of rivalry that multiple sources believe was one of the main reasons Napoleon held a continued grudge against him. In addition, his actions in Unity painted a picture of an incredibly courageous, unapologetic, talented, and vastly loyal soldier who constantly endeavored to serve France in the name of liberty. As a final point, I liked how another fictional side mission, inspired by historical anecdotes, had Zuma requesting Arnaud's help in retrieving a few letters from his lost family members, which are actually thought to have been his only mementos from his mother and siblings. Overall, Although I was disappointed about how short his appearance in the game actually was, I found that this war hero, cited by many as the highest ranked person of color in the history of continental European armies, was still worth discussing in a video. Having said that, we have reached the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this content, we would appreciate it if you shared this series with your friends and checked out the other available episodes. Should you have a future video request, feel free to leave it in the comments. My sources for making this video can be found in the description bar below. 
Thanks for watching.